Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter 3 talking about the reviews and continuing with the part 2 of 3.3 management reviews today. To further continue but of course before in the part 1 we have understood how exactly what steps must be taken into consideration when talking about planning the reviews and what kind of questions and what type of factors must be considered uh, by the test manager and the teams when planning to conduct a review and uh, making sure that these uh, reviews when conducted must be adding value to the process rather than just being conducted for formality. Now here we are going to talk about in the part two more about what exactly happens during the actual execution of review and what happens after the review gets completed or performed. But still to add a little more information from the planning point of view that review planning should address the risk associated with the technical factors, organizational factors and people issues when performing the reviews. The availability of the reviewers with sufficient technical knowledge is critical to successful reviews. Now this can be recalled from the foundation level because all the factors which are related to the organization level or the people issues will be will have all has already been discussed as a part of the foundation level. And if you quickly want that, you can definitely navigate to that and you can understand more about from the foundation level syllabus. But of course, there are several factors which uh, contributes from the point of organization, which is management specific and people that is from the reviewer point of view. Now to further add, all teams within the project should be involved in planning for the reviews which should ensure that each team is committed to the success of the review process. Planning must ensure that each organization is allocating sufficient time for required reviews, reviewers to prepare for and participate in the reviews at appropriate points in the project schedule. Now that means that it's just not one particular team's responsibility to plan out the overall review because it may have stakeholders from multiple teams and coming in and contributing to the overall review success rate. But at the same time, when we are involving different stakeholders, then contributing to the planning to make it more effective so that tomorrow when you conduct the review, it should be efficient enough. So contribution from different projects are really vital because it will contribute from different uh, stakeholders perspective as well to do a proper planning and uh, then get into the process to actually execute them because planning is very important to lay out the schedule and lay out the plan in order to conduct and make a review successful further to add time should be uh, time should also be planned for any required technical or process training for the reviewers backup reviewers should be identified in case of uh, key reviewers become unavailable due to changes in personal or business plans. Now, of course, these are uh, kind of, you know, mitigation plans to the review as well from the reviewer point of view that uh, time, sh number one, that time should be uh, well educated that what kind of duration you need in order to review the content and contribute from the findings. And in case uh, you're talking about the training to be provided to them, that how exactly a review process is conducted. Because a trained reviewer will definitely be more efficient in contributing to the review process than an untrained one. So you always look forward to first uh, train your team members at certain point of time uh, during the life cycle or maybe before that, give them a training formal way of understanding that what exactly review is all about, how it can be conducted and then uh, make sure that you give them inputs and guidance at it several points of time during several reviews being conducted. And then, of course, you're talking about the count of the reviewers which you might have selected for your process to uh, contribute to. But of course, uh, sometimes these reviewers may not be available due to their personal issues or sometimes due to the business plans. They might have, uh, you know, something else scheduled or probably some business meetings or maybe, you know, traveling to on site. So he might not be available that time or maybe business calls. So you must uh, always look forward to have a backup reviewer which will definitely be uh, as a substitute to that person. But the things that is that, uh, you know, review will go on and be executed. Now, what else? Of course, during the actual execution post planning of the formal review process, the review leader, which is your test manager, must ensure that adequate measurements are provided by the participants in the reviews to allow evaluation of the review efficiency. Checklists are created and maintained to improve future reviews. Defect severity and priority evaluations are defined for use in defect management of issues found during reviews. So these are basically the quick inputs that during the review also we need to take care of certain aspects 
which assures you that if these things are being implemented as per the plan, then only the review will be successful. In case uh, things are not in place and people are not contributing and uh, measurements are not being monitored, it will never let you know that how exactly your review is going on and whether it is going to be beneficial or adding value to your process or not. That's where people sometimes lack being a, a organizer for a review process. You do just don't have to plan out the things, but also have to make sure that you're monitoring the progress and measuring certain matrices to measure the effectiveness and the outcome of the uh, review process. Further to add, after each review, the review leader should collect several things. Like for example, collect the review matrices and ensure that the issue identified are sufficiently resolved to meet the specific test objectives for the review. Use the review matrices as input when determining the ROI for the reviews. Uh, provide feedback information to the relevant stakeholder, which is from the point of like, you know, reworking on that and, uh, uh, you know, fixing the issues which were reported by the reviewer and getting back to them with the solution is, uh, of course, will help them understand that the review uh, feedback has been resolved or it has been reworked on. And if there are any further questions uh, as a result of fixing that issue, uh, may have another question from the reviewer. So you try to, uh, you know, discuss with them that uh, fixing this particular issue which you reported has resulted into any other problem or any other misunderstanding, then let's continue further to talk about it and provide feedback to the review participants uh, that is from the you know, participants point of view that how exactly people have contributed was that really a successful review or not uh, in case you needed uh, some more better contributions from the reviewers you will let them know that next time we are looking forward to have more interactive or more contributing review process and more engaging review process and so on but these things will be done post uh, the review process is done because that, that time is the only one where you can determine that what could go as per the plan and what didn't go as per the plan uh, which you expected to happen. To evaluate the effectiveness of the reviews, a test manager can compare actual results found in the subsequent testing. That means later during the life cycle when you execute certain test cases and then you realize that you could have found these defects during that review which you conducted. So that will basically determine how effective your review process was at that point of time. For example, I was reviewing design documentations and uh, I did find a lot of defects in the design documentation and after it was reworked, we finalized it and then we derived certain test cases using the design documents and executed. Then we found a defect and when uh, we reported to the development team, and the root cause was determined as design misunderstanding or design incompatibility. So if these are the issues and the root causes belong to the design which you reviewed already, we say that our review was not effective because still the defect could leak from the design phase to the dynamic testing and uh, you you know decrease decrease the cost of return on investment saying that uh, we could have identified all these things there actually right now during the testing finding them requires a lot of rework thus increasing the cost of testing as well as total cost of quality now uh, likely cause include problem with the review process improper composition of the review team inadequate review tools insufficient uh, reviewers training and experiences and tool user preparation and review meeting time so these are some of the common factors that why your review process may not be an effective one number one is of course the problems with the process itself that you don't know how to align different activities at different point of time the second is that is like from the point of entry and exit criteria second is of course the review team itself that whom you called up for the review they were not the efficient uh, experienced people to add value to the review so you should have called some other experienced and senior people in the organization to do that job. Inadequate review tools, if you're making use of checklist or any other source uh, to be referred during the review meeting or reviewing of the documentation, then uh, those lack will definitely lead into uh, you know, outcomes which are not expected by the team. Uh, insufficient reviewer training, well, not they are not well trained and their experience and too little preparation or a review meeting time that means so you didn't provide them enough time to find good number of defects from the documentation review well a pattern of escape defects which is like escape that that's what we just quickly discussed that when it comes from uh you know defect being identified during dynamic testing which was having a root cause from the misunderstanding of the requirement or misunderstanding of the defect is what we call it as defect escape 
That means we should have found that during the review of the requirements or during the review of the design documentation, but we are finding that defect during dynamic testing. So amount of rework is really high. So with the pattern of the escape defects repeated across several projects, it indicates that there are significant problems with the conduct of reviews. And test managers should look into these parameters to determine that what best can be done at this point of time to add more value and to improvise your overall review process. Well, that was all from this particular tutorial team talking about the management reviews in order to understand that what should be done during planning, actual execution, and after the execution of a review. So should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.